Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about how to create patches that you can create yourself and share with the community. Now I have a grayscale file here called .arp and that's what's known as a patch inside of a community. So if I go to the community here, this is uh, the Spark AR community, and I just search for the word patch. Always search by the way. Um, if I just scroll down a little bit, it's not a post for me just because it's waiting for me, but you're going to see one. Here we go. Here's one from Josh uh, where he's talking about how he's updated his LUT patch uh, that Mateus uh, has, has uh, also contributed to. So um, if you want to see what this is, we'll just go ahead and click. This is actually his entire project files, and this shows you uh, what this is. So he has a LUT patch here. And you can see that you're connecting your camera texture, you're connecting some sort of a LUT texture that you're uh, generating yourself, and then you connect that to a material. Now, this is called a patch. If you wanted to use uh, his, you, here's a download right here for his patch file. So you can just download this .arp. So what I've done is I've actually got this grayscale ARP just to show you a quick example of how this works. I'm gonna take this ARP, I'm gonna drag it over here into my asset panel it's going to appear, and then I'm going to take it, I'm gonna drag it into my patch editor. And it's going to, there you go, show me what that is. So then if I wanna make this work, I just connect my camera texture to my material and make that pass through in the grayscale and it turns it into gray. So the cool thing about this is you can actually, if I make this a little bit bigger, expand this and learn how this stuff is working. We're not gonna cover that today though. So. What I want to tell you is how do you make these? So when you are creating things and you're like, man, this would be a cool thing to share. I wish somebody had this thing when I was starting out. Um, I wish, you know, if you have those kind of thoughts, then this is the tutorial for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an effect that I've just built uh, and published. So I actually just published a tutorial on how to build this exact effect where you open your mouth and it wiggles your face. You'll see him when he gets to the point of opening, right? Wiggles your face. So what I've done is uh, this works for two people right now. Um, and uh, what I've done is I've created this uh, grouping uh, of a graph. And if I expand it, you'll see this is what I'm doing with everything inside of this. So I've actually already grouped this, which means that I have uh, highlighted everything and then right click and said group and then it groups it into a block here, a, group, a, a patch. Um, and then, uh, so what I wanna do is I want to, let's say I wanna take this face wiggle and I wanna share it with the community. So I say, I wanna actually make this into an ARP file and say, hey, if you connect a face and you connect a face mesh, then it's gonna wiggle. Okay, awesome. Please, I encourage you to do so. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click this gear here and go down to group properties. So you'll notice that we have our inputs and our outputs. So we know that our output is always gonna be a face mesh, so why don't we just go ahead and label it that way? So here's our output, that's this part right here. See, it doesn't have a label when I put my mouse over it. We're just gonna go ahead and call this face mesh. See, look at that, nice label. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we can just go ahead and close this. Now, let's say I wanna give some more controls uh, to someone. So I'm gonna explode this and go back inside of my, um, my, my uh, patch here that I've created. And uh, I want to give them the option to change the duration here, right? Make sense? So the first thing I wanna do is I want to go back here to group properties and I'm gonna add an input. And I'm gonna call it duration. You'll notice that's gonna put a nice field on there that I can change. So I'm gonna go back into my thing and look at that, I can just connect it right to duration. Perfect. So now if I go back to here, I can change this to 0.15 and it will work exactly the same. Ready? Perfect. So let's go back and let's see what other things that we can give people control over. So. Now we have our transition. This is one thing I'd love to be able to give people control over. Now this is the degrees that this changes. So this is eight degrees on each side as he opens his mouth. I wanna be able to say, people could change this to 360 degrees, spin that sucker all the way around if they want to. So let's do it. So we're actually gonna go back and we're gonna call this, uh, we're gonna make a new port or a new setting, sorry, 
input, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and we're going to call it degrees. Right? So again, we're going to go back into here and we're going to connect our degrees. So this is going to be whatever number they put in here. So let's make that the end. So it'll be eight degrees. And then how do we get this to negate itself? So we know that we want the opposite of this number to be in the start value, right? Well, these people are geniuses. They already have a thing in here called negate. I just pass it to this, look at that, it negates it, and I go back to here, and that is it. So now we have that connected. So let's go back to this, so we have this. So let's set this to eight again, there we go. So now we should have eight to negative eight when he opens his mouth. <clears throat> we get to that loop, he's about to do it. Perfect, still working great. So let's say we really wanna crank it up. Just to test it out, let's do 180 degrees. And let's do it over the course of uh, 0.5 seconds. Ready? Whoa. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So let's go back. We're just going to change our values back so we don't get that craziness anymore. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else in here that we can change. So we can change the less than value. That's not necessarily something that I want to give anyone control over right now. Um, I think that this is actually done. So this is my entire face. Uh, face wiggle patch. I can connect the face, so all I have to do is just connect a face select. So if I were to um, share this with the community, hopefully what I would do is take a screenshot of how this looks so people know how to connect things. Um, what's great about having these ports on here is that means that people can now use programmatic things to change them. So now they can use your face wiggle patch and programmatically change the duration or the degrees depending on maybe how wide their mouth is open. I mean, there's all kinds of cool things that people can add on to your stuff. So Finally, what you want to do is just click here and you'll see create asset from group. So what that's going to do is you'll see all the way over here, you're going to create your face patch. We're just going to keep it called face wiggle. There it is. If I highlight it and go all the way over here, there it is, face wiggle.arp. And I can do copy file path. I'm just going to go ahead and reveal it in the finder. It's right here. I can take this, I can upload it right to the community and they can use it in their projects. Pretty cool, right? So this is a really quick tutorial. I really hope that everybody sees this and sees how easy it is to make these type of patches. That way we can all share things together. Now, no patch is too small. It's okay to have a ton of patches. I don't even wanna show you what my patch folder looks like because it's like ridiculous right now. I have like hundreds of patches in there and they're all just randomized. They're all from the community. They're all from people that um, maybe I've even purchased them from other creators off Gumroad. Um, like like um, um, Mate's uh, glass shader uh, patch. Um, you know, there's, there's so many great uses for these things. So, uh, and, and, and it saves everyone a lot of time, um, and that's great, but really what I encourage you to do is if you do use someone else's patch, go ahead and hit that explode button and try to figure out how they're doing it because you'll, you'll probably learn something. Uh, I, you won't probably learn something. You'll definitely learn something. So, uh, Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button again. And uh, not again, but please hit it if you haven't. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.